All right, guys, so today I want to do something a little bit differently and just have a bit of a walkthrough and uh, look at some of the features of the Sony K611S uh, cassette deck. There's a couple of different model numbers that are all basically the same deck. I think the 511S and the 614S is basically the same thing. Um, this is a Japanese three-head uh, deck from the early to mid 90s it incorporates a couple of different features you won't see on a lot of decks of the same price range so i'd say we're about mid-range uh where we are with this one and the fact that it's mid-range uh gives you a lot of features but if you were to look at its counterparts from denon and technics it does have a lot of things going for it that they don't have um these ship with dolby s there is a pretty decent bias adjustment system on it. Uh, you have electronically open and closed uh, door and just, just a lot of nice bits here and there that make this a bit of a keeper. Um, I have had conversations with people who have ES decks and I have had an ES deck and there a few people have said, look, like I prefer the 611S to the ES decks whatever the reasons are, i'm not sure they they do have uh, different transports they're slightly nicer transports to be honest with you um but i've had this now for um a couple of years i think now i've i've, I've serviced and, and fixed these quite regularly because i'm used to uh the the system and the setup and the transport and the common faults as well <clears throat> and we'll touch on that um we'll power it up first um, so to start off with common faults with these is, is basically belts, um, belts is the usual thing, motors can go because the motor's running all the time so sometimes your motor can be overly noisy when it's running, I do find that if you have a motor that's overly noisy, uh, I've got one coming in now to repair for, for, for somebody who got in touch, um, leaving it run for a day uh, really solves a lot of the problems of the uh, a noisy motor because they are pretty good motors the capstan motors and yet if you leave them for a while which a lot of these have been left for a while by this point uh, obviously we're talking sort of 20 30 years since these were manufactured a lot of them do sit about for a bit you know cassettes go out of out of favor and a lot of the ones you're buying now are going to have been sat around for a bit especially if you buy one with a fault that you're going to repair um because you know it could have the belts could have broke on it or the fault could have happened years ago and it's been sat since so as this is on the front there it's a three head uh three motor transport mechanism and the motors on the back of it you have one primarily for your capstan and then you one for the door and then you have one for the mode select so inside the transport there there is a large cam at the back and when you are selecting the different modes play reverse fast forward and stuff uh, it is that mode select motor that is turning the cam and allowing it to select whatever mode you'd like to be in. Now, attached to that cam, however, is uh, a switch. It's, it's about the size of a 10 pence piece and about three times as thick. And it's actually called a rotary encoder. So one of one fault I have seen a few times is that rotary encoder, um, the contacts inside it have become dirty and it can get stuck between the modes. So you go to press play and it can kind of jet there backwards and forwards. I do have a video, I think, of one that I did repair. Uh, it was quite new to YouTube at the time, so I didn't actually film the repair of the rotary encoder. But it's very simple just to Google it and there's plenty of pictures of that. Um, so belts is a common one um, and the rotary encoder. And I think the more, most common fault that I see on these decks is pinch rollers. So the pinch roller is kind of down here. And what happens with it is is it causes tape skew. Now tape skew is, um, as the tape's passing across the heads, it can go off to the left or right very slightly. Sometimes it can be so extreme that it'll just pull it off completely and it won't work at all. And uh, that, that results from a poor or damaged or old or whatever pinch roller. And um, pinch rollers aren't very expensive, really. They're, they're easily found. You can use a generic one. I wouldn't use the absolute cheapest ones because they tend to have quite a lot of play in them. And when you have a lot of play, you're just going to experience the same problems as what you experienced in the first place. So um, 
that can cause you to have uh, not being able to calibrate the deck when recording, which we'll touch on in a minute. Uh, it can cause you to lose the highs and the treble from whatever you're playing. And uh, it can basically just mean that it won't work properly. For something as simple as a pinch roller, you do have to remove a transport in order to replace a pinch roller because it's actually blocked by this bottom bit here. Um, and this door's removable for you to be able to set everything up. So we'll go for the features and then some other bits and bobs and we'll do a bit of a demonstration of the calibration settings and how I like to set it up. So it's all logic controlled. Basically, as I says, you've got a motor inside a transport that's controlling everything. Your standard buttons and everything and you have a record mute system on this, which is quite nice. Digital counter, which is in time as opposed to just digits. So if you play for a minute, this will display a minute. We have a record timer over here, which I have honestly, I've never used. Uh, MPX filter is a filter for if you're recording off the radio. So some radio stations used to transmit a, a certain tone at a certain wavelength. I think it's 9 kilohertz or 19 kilohertz. So if you're recording from the radio, it meant that you couldn't get a decent recording, which was to stop from piracy and whatever else. Uh, Dolby noise reduction, it has B, C and S. Now, I did read somewhere that when these first came out, it wasn't the intention to have Dolby S on them. So a lot of these decks will ship with a big, massive Dolby S sticker on the front. And also this uh, Dolby S noise reduction on the front. Some uh, doors are missing that. And obviously, it was easy in the factory to, uh, to, to replace these and produce a new one. Uh, we have a bias setting and record level. So this goes hand in hand with your recording calibration. A monitor button, which allows you to listen to the tape whilst you're recording which is obviously the point of a three head system is it gives you a better control over recording headphone jack and a headphone level which is quite nice to have balance for left and right when recording and our recording level um notes to point out if you were to get the uh, a similar price deck at the time from denon and technics the bias and recording level isn't as good as this you'll maybe have a fine bias which is kind of for tape selection this has automatic tape selection on it so it will uh, come up on here under type as to what tape it is you're putting in and it's done through uh, switches at the top of the transport when you put your tape in and we'll put in a type one and a type two and you can see that so if i were to uh, open the door as you can see, that's all done electronically, and it's, it's one motor for that. So if you have a fault where your tape is running fine, but something wrong with the door opening, generally it's that motor, and really it's that belt uh, that controls that. Um, the uh, I've never seen one yet with problems with the buttons, with the logic control buttons. I've never had to clean or replace any buttons, and I've probably repaired a service maybe 25, 30 of these now. So that's one thing to consider if you have one and something's not working. Generally, it's a transport that's at fault as opposed to any of these buttons. So if I were to fire a Type 1 tape in there now, you'll notice that it's selected Type 1. It actually puts a little bit of wine back on the tape to, uh, to make sure that you've got no slack in the tape. And it'll knock off uh, a second on your counter. So if it's important to you, you need to reset it straight away. But that's nice. You've also got a little light behind there which is quite nice to be able to see what tape's remaining. The light, if you ever take one of these apart, is uh, part of a black plate inside the transport, which can come out, but you do need the transport out to get it out. You also need that transport out in order to uh, get into your rotary. Ro uh, say again, you also need that plate removing to get into any uh, rotary encoder repair and things, because you need to be on this side of the transport in order to get it out. So tape selection works. Dolby noise reduction as you turn it, you've got the display there and it goes off when you've got nothing on at all. There is a bit of a conspiracy theory that they put Dolby on these in order to uh, counteract poor transport quality and feedback from tapes. You know, there's the argument that some very high-end machines don't have Dolby on them uh, because their motors and their transports are a lot better. Whether that's true, I honestly don't know. But uh, I'll eject this one and we'll stick a Type 2 tape in. And it's the same for all the other tapes, if I'm honest with you. This is a, uh, a Woolworths tape, which I have no idea of the quality. And straight away we're on tape two, it's rounded it back and it's gone back a second there. So, um, 
The rest of the things is pretty straightforward. The, the nicest bit about this deck I find is, is calibration, the calibration system. A lot of decks will have uh, automatic calibration where it'll basically just do it for you. And uh, that's not, you know, that's if it works then it's good. I've had a couple of Technics decks that have been pretty good at, at doing that and it's produced decent quality recordings. Um, so I really don't have a massive problem with it, but I like to do it myself, you know, and uh, depending on what you're recording from, sometimes the quality of the recording can differ by track and you maybe want to change the bias as you're recording. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out because I'm not entirely sure of the quality of that tape. And as soon as it's a Sony deck, we'll try a uh, CD2 and we'll do a bit of a demonstration of the uh, calibration features. Interestingly, that has taken up the tape there, but because it's right at the start, it didn't actually count as a rewind. One of the fault that I do see on these decks sometimes is that uh, the reels, so the way that this system and its transport detects whether you've come to the end of a tape or you're rewinding back to the start of a tape, the way that it knows when to stop that action is by sensors. And the sensors are light sensors on the backs of these plastic reels deep within the transport. There's two light sensors and on the back of these reels, there are small mirrors. So there's three small mirrors very small about the size of the end of a pencil eraser and if those mirrors are dirty or they've got muck on them or they've got uh, you know, some kind of residue or something on them it can't detect what's going on so another common fault is when you play it it'll play for two or three seconds and then it'll stop and if everything's working but it just keeps stopping by itself generally that's the fault that, uh, that I can, you can pin it down to so we've got ourselves a type 2 tape here and what i'm going to do is we're going to go into the calibration menu to do some recording so what i like to do is reset the bias and the recording level all the way to the top i always have dolby off to do this obviously you can put it on to do your recordings or whatever i never really use b i do have some tapes i've already recorded on a different deck in c so i do use that s is generally pretty good uh, but I think as as I've developed and, and as I've carried out different recordings and things like that, I tend to stop using it. Um, and one of the main reasons I bought this deck was in the first place was because it had Dolby S on it. My current one had C and I wanted to see what it was like. And, and in, in my view, it's an upgrade, you know. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the calibration button. And you'll notice on here now, this is the, the level meters for uh for playback so it's left and right and it shows you the levels that you're going to be getting uh the dolby logo is just basically at zero on this one which is also interesting because some decks will have it at plus two so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure dolby's off our mpx filter is off and uh, i'm going to press the calibration button also you notice that green green in green there it says tape that's your uh, source and tape monitor selection. So make sure you're in tape. And what we're going to do is press calibration. When you press calibration, it changes those levels to high and low. So what it's doing is it'll record a combination of high and low tones to your tape and then play back and listen to it at the same time because it's got three heads so it can record and it can play back at the same time. And what it'll do is it, it'll basically display on here how your highs and your lows are showing on your tape and then from there we're going to adjust the bias and the recording level so once you're in there press record and it'll be record paused and press play so as you can see as you can see we're straight into the tape here this is a type 2 so the highs are going to be a bit higher and i find that at the start of tapes it does wobble about a little bit so if you want a decent calibration maybe fast forward 20 30 seconds to stop you wobbling about and what this is telling us is that it's recording, and as it's recording, the highs, we're looking at, to calibrate these two arrows here, but they're saying the highs are too high, the lows are too high, and the levels overall are way too high. So the first thing I do is use my recording level and turn it to the left, turn it down, and as we do, it knocks it right down. So if we were to record from a source on this tape using this setting, it would be way too bright, the highs would be too high, and the lows would be just right. And then we use our bias knob and we're going to turn this to the left in order to decrease those highs, I believe. I'm lying, we're going to turn it to the right. And with the biasing, what you're doing is you're removing 
it's, it's a balance of highs and lows. So you're removing highs to give you lows and vice versa. So there's a nice middle ground in there. So I'm going to turn it clockwise and you'll notice that'll start coming down now. But as it's coming down, the lows are coming up. So we need to adjust our recording level again. And just adjust it a little bit. And you'll notice that that high is kind of flickering in and out. And this is uh, basically due to the, the tape itself. We're quite at the start of the tape here. It's been wrapped around a, a spool there. Notice the counter's counting in minutes and seconds, which is really handy to be honest with you. I, I'm quite happy with that. But basically, if you were, according to Sony, if you were to use a certain Sony tape that's in the manual and you were to record at this stage in this level, that should be a perfect recording. Now, I find on on any of these decks, and it's not just this one, this has been calibrated using the oscilloscope, the speed's been correctly set, everything is as correct as I can make it on this deck, this is my own personal one. I find if I record at this, then it could still do with a little more high tones on it. The bass is just a little bit too prominent, and I like to basically over bias it. So what I'll do is I'll adjust the bias, to there and that's personally where I prefer to record so we are two dots above the red arrows on the highs and then we're also sitting at the correct level for the lows that's exactly where I like to record on these decks and I find it gives you really good results your recording level on here does not give any credence to this whatsoever calibration is simply recording level and bias over here this recording level is for when you are playing an input into the back of the unit from a CD or from you know Bluetooth device or wherever you want and that's to adjust it manually so what this is saying is bias in the recording level is correct as long as the decibel output of what you're putting into it matches what it's expecting and after that you're going to use a recording level on this side to match what you want so I'll be happy with this tape this is what I then go and record on it you notice it's flashing on and off there Maybe I want to turn that, uh, turn it up just a touch. So for this particular tape, and this does change by tapes as well. It depends on what tape you're using. Type twos are always going to be brighter because that's the formulation of the tape. I find that this is about correct. If I were to pull this out now and replace that tape with. Uh, it's a chrome but it's from Woolworths so who knows what the quality of this is this should be different so I'll go recording uh, calibration again press record and play and then once we get some tape so you see that high level floating in and out at the start of the tape there so as you can see it's very dependent by tape because if I wanted to calibrate this tape, the calibration is totally different. The levels are going up and down a little bit. It's just settling out. It's going to prove me wrong and it's going to be about right. So for that one, I'd have to adjust a little bit more. So I'll just do one more demonstration. And what we're going to use here is a pretty poor quality. Well, it's a nice looking tape. But it's a pretty poor quality type 1 tape. So I'm going to do the same thing on this, and this is maybe you know, five minutes into the tape. I'm going to count the same calibration. This is going to be all over the place. So this is recording onto the tape and listening to it at the same time. Honestly, that's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Um, usually, if you get a poor quality tape, it struggles to get the highs. But as you can see, the highs are fluctuating all over the place. We are very much into uh, 70s type 1 territory here so if i would try and bias that that's actually biasing a lot better than i thought it would for the tape maybe it's a decent quality tape so that's taken a reasonable amount of adjustment there to get those highs as to where i want them to be obviously we lost a bit of uh there we go so in comparison to that last tape, our bias is way over to the left and the recording level is actually very to the negative. So it, it, it just shows how different it can be between tapes. So if for some reason you think you can't get a tape to, uh, to calibrate for recording, it's not necessarily the deck. 
it's very much dependent on what you're putting into it and what the quality of the tape is you know if you've got a tape that's been recorded on 15 16 times compared to a brand new tape then your bias and everything's going to be a lot different so i hope that helps with the calibration um i can't see me changing this deck personally anytime soon i've had some great results out of it um i do have a nakamichi deck lying about which i'm not convinced to change um yet i'm not too sure because of my starting to to, to drop off a dolby i think that um it's not so much of a game changer anymore the three head thing and the calibration is basically where i need to be i think but you can tell from your own ears when you play these things back uh but yeah, so if you're considering picking one of these decks up, 100% recommend it. It's been amazing. I, I've not had a bad recording out of it. As long as it's, you know, this is new belts calibrated, as I say. As long as yours is of a similar nature, then I don't think you'll have any problems. Just as you get to the end, the doorbell rings. So, right, I hope this has been informative and useful if you're looking at these decks and wanting to pick one up. Or you maybe got one and you're not entirely sure as to how it works or what the common faults could be. Um, the only things I can think of uh, is, is pretty standard features that you can kind of see for yourself, you know. The uh, the AMS is, is a track skipping system, so it'll monitor the tape as you're fast forward, you know, rewinding, and uh, it'll give you the ability to skip tracks. I'll just demonstrate that with a bit of Chaz and Dave. I don't believe Chaz and Dave has got many gaps in it, but if we are playing... There's our levels. You can see I press fast forward once and it'll go one track, two track, three tracks. And then it'll stop wherever you tell it to stop for that next track. Quite handy, but to be honest with you, by this stage, pretty common. Um, I've heard that they're lovingly, I don't say lovingly inverted commas, called old clunkers by the guys that used to uh, service these back when they were new, simply by the noise that they're the transport jet makes you know i get that but uh yeah so if you you know you really like this deck let me know if you hate it let me know uh, if you have an es deck and you've tried both i'd be really interested to know what you thought was the benefits of getting an es deck uh k90 or whatever you know um because i'd be tempted to give it a shot and uh, it's, if it's something that you think is definitely worth an upgrade, then uh, I'm all ears. So, as ever, have a good day. Bye-bye.